Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, we are going to take another fresh and interesting in the topic that is sine and cosine rule. We are starting with the very first rule, that is the sine rule. Both of these two rules are very, very usable while you are solving bearing questions. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, you'll be able to state what is the sign rule, and you'll also be able to use the, the sign rule to solve the triangle problems. These are the two things I hope, my dear student, you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usually in your paper, right, the segment of the lesson must expand today, I'll give you another interesting group of numbers. These numbers are called the case numbers. I will explain with our examples what are case numbers after completing my lesson today. So don't go away. To begin the lesson, my dear student, let me just use the this the typical triangle. Is this that I'm going to use to, to explain what is sine rule and all other things involved? Let me just explain these notations. This is angle at E. Then the side opposite to it, it is learned to now be denoted by small letter E. If this is angle at B, then the side opposite to it, it is learned to now be denoted by small letter B. Likewise, this will now be small letter C because it is opposite to the angle at C. So in this a typical triangle, what sign rule says, uh, it says if you now take uh, E, E, that is the length of this very side, and you divide it by sine E, that is the sine of the angle opposite to it, is the same result you are going to have when you take B, that is the length of this very side, and divide that length by the sine of the angle opposite to it, that is sine B, that is the same result you are going to have when you take this very length C, and you divide it by the sine of the angle opposite to it. This is what sine rule says. So these three ratios are always the same, provided it is from the same triangle. You can equally rewrite this rule, that is this sine rule, by taking the reciprocal. That is, instead E over sine E, you now have sine E as the numerator divided by E. It's the same also sine B divided by the length of the sine opposite. So this is what the sine rule says. Let me just move. So condition for using sine rule. Sine rule can be used in either of the following cases. Let us see the cases. If you wanted to find the length of a side of a particular triangle, that is case one. What you need to do if we are to use the sine rule, there are basic details that you must see in the triangle. Similarly, if you wanted to find the size of a particular angle in your triangle, that is case two. There must be some details that must be there before you apply the sign rule. Otherwise, you cannot. Let's see what are the details that you must have in each of these cases. So in case one, that is if we wanted to find the length of a particular side of the triangle, just like this very triangle. Suppose you want to find the length of the side BC, BC, or you wanted to find the length of the side EC, because these two are missing. So what this says, uh, if you wanted to find the letter of the side, you must have two angles and one side none. So let's just see this drawing and analyze this condition. You can see this angle is marked, which means it's given in the question. This angle also at B is marked, which means it's given in the question. And the length of the side AB is also marked, which means it's given in the question. Then you can now use the, this either to find the the missing side AC or the missing side BC. Let me just move to the case two. Case two is finding the angle. For you to find the angle, two sides of that very triangle must be given. And uh, one angle opposite to one of those sides must also be given. Let me just use this drawing to analyze it. If we are to find the angle, either this angle at A that is missing, or this angle at B that is missing. What is required, the basic information that you must have in the triangle, it says you must have two sides. So in this case, I have side AB. AB is given because it is marked. I have also side AC, you can see two marks, which means it's given in the question. And I have this angle at the C. These are the conditions we now used to find, to find either an angle or a side in a triangle 
using the sign rule. Let me just move and take examples. Example number one, you asked to find the value of y in the figure below. This is a triangle. I have two angles, 40 and 60. And the length of this side is 10 millimeters. I'm asked to find the length of this side, which is denoted by letter y. This is the y that I'm asked to find, is simply the length of this side. So solution to this very problem, remember the condition. The two angles, one of them must be opposite to that very side that is given. In this case, it's 10 millimeters, and the, the angle opposite to it is missing. So I can find it using sum of angle in a triangle. That is summation of all the three angles gives me 180. So subtracting the two angles given from 180 will give me the third angle, which will now be 80 degrees. So this angle is now 80. So I have the angle opposite to this side that is given. I can now find y using the using the sine rule. So sine rule says from here, if you take a sine 40, sine 40, look at angle 40, divided by the side opposite to it, which is letter y, which I wanted to find, will now be equal to sine 80. Look at the angle 80, is this your theta that is 80, divided by the side opposite to it, which is 10 millimeters. So what I'm going to do next is to cross multiply. Cross multiply, you now have uh, y multiplied by sine 80 equals to 10 multiplied by sine 40. It's y that I wanted to find. So I will now divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which will now be the value of this sine 80 degrees. So let me do that. Dividing both sides by sine 80, you now have y by the left equals to 10 multiplied by sine 40 all over sine 80. So what it remains for me is now to find what is sine 40, what is sine 80 using my calculator. If I do that correctly, you have uh, 10 multiplied by 0 0.6428. That is the value of sine 40. And divided by 0 0.9848. That is the value of sine 80. So multiplying and dividing correctly will give answer y to be equal to 6.5272 millimeters. This is the length of this side of the triangle y. So let us move and take another example. So example number two it says in the triangle ABC, the angle at B is 29 degrees. This side is denoted by small letter A, that is the side small letter A is 7.5 centimeters and the distance small letter B is 5.2 centimeters. The question asks is to find the size of angle BAC. Solution to this very problem, the sketching of this very triangle and inputting all the details. There I have the triangle ABC. The angle at B is 29. This is the angle at B, 29, which is marked in the drawing. Next is this distance small letter A. Remember, small letter A is the side opposite to angle at A. So it is this side that will now be 7.5. Let me mark it. And the distance small letter B would now be the side opposite to this angle at B. So it will now be this very side. There you have 5.2 centimeters. And uh, what we asked to find is uh, the size of the angle BAC. BAC is simply referring to this very angle. So let me just call it theta. It is this angle that I'm asked to find. So to find the theta, let me just write my sine rule. I will now have a side of theta, that is the sine of this very angle that I wanted to find, divided by the side opposite to it, 7.5, equals to the sine of this angle, 29, divided by the side opposite to it, which is 5.2. So what I'm going to do next is to cross multiply. Cross multiply, and I will now have uh, side theta multiplied by 5.2. Look at it. Look at it equals to 7.5 multiplied by sine 29. So what I'm going to do is to divide both sides by 5.2 so that I have my sine theta alone. So there, if done correctly, you now have 7.5 multiplied by sine 29, everything divided by 5.2. So what I'm going to do next is to use my four-figure table or calculator to find what is now sine 29 degrees. So in 29 degrees, if you find it correctly, you now have 0 0.4848. So I will now multiply and divide. If that is now done correctly, you now have 0 
this is a sine theta, not the theta. So what I'm going to do to get the theta, I'm now taking the sine inverse. So sine inverse of 0 0.6992, if done correctly, either from your calculator or from your four-figure table, if that is done correctly, you now have 44.37 degrees. This is now the, the angle theta that I'm asked to find, which is now the, the angle BAC. So let's just move and take one more example. Example number three says we have to find the angle YDZ, YDZ, look at YDZ in this very drawing, from this very figure. So this is the angle. But I have this length 28 and I have this length 20 and I have this very angle 30 degrees. So solution to this very problem, you now go back to the drawing and see the angle that they asked to find, it is this very angle. It's an exterior angle of this very triangle. If I can find this angle inside, which is adjacent to this exterior angle, I think I am done. Because I can now use angles on a straight line to find this angle that is the exterior angle. So let me just mark the angle inside my triangle. Let me call it theta. If I can find the theta, I think I'm done. So sine rule for you to find the theta will now be sine theta divided by 28. Look at the theta divided by the side opposite to it equals to sine 30 divided by the side opposite to it, which is 20. So I will now cross multiply. Cross multiplying gives you sine theta equals to and dividing both sides by the coefficient of sine theta, which is 20. You now have uh, sine theta equals to 28 multiplied by sine 30 all over 20. So now use your calculator to find what is sine 30 degrees. If that is done correctly, you now have 0 0.5 as the value of sine 30. So next is to multiply 28 by 0 0.5 and divide the result by 20. If that is done correctly, you now have 0 0.7. This is the sine theta. So what we now do is to find the sine inverse of this 0 0.7. That will now be the size of our angle theta. So if that is now done correctly, you now have a theta to be equals to 44.42 degrees. This is the value of theta after taking the sine inverse of 0 0.7. But remember, we asked to find this exterior angle, which I said if I have my angle theta, I can now use angle on a straight line to find this angle because the two are adjacent angle on a straight line. So to find that angle, y dz is simply equals to 80 minus 44.42 degrees. And my reason is adjacent angle on a straight line. So subtracting 44.42 from 180, if done correctly, you now have 135.58 degrees. This is the size of the angle YDZ. With this, my dear student, I have come to the end of this very lesson. I hope uh, with the few examples given, you'll be able to use the design rule to solve the triangle problems. So let me just move quickly to the last segment, mass is fun. And I explain what are case in the numbers. To do that, let's just consider a number that is having any digits. That is an any digit number. That is a number with either two digits or three digits or four digits, whatever. And you now use those digits to form a sequence of numbers. And that sequence will now have first n terms as those digits in the number. That is, if it is two digit number, you take or you consider. First two terms of that very sequence will now be those digits in the two-digit number. If it is three digit, the first three terms of that very sequence will now be those digits in the number and so on. And other terms are simply obtained by addition of the last n terms. So if it is two-digit number, you take first. To get the third term, what you now do, you add the last two terms. If it is a three digit, so we keep adding last three terms to get the next term. This is what we keep doing. As we continue writing more terms, we now have a term in that very sequence that we have generated. And that term is the original number. Then the original number is called the case number. So let's take an example. Example 28 is a case number. 197 is a case number. Let's start with the 28. 28, if I take 28, it has two digits there. And the, if I am to form the sequence, the sequence will now have first two terms, two and eight. So to get the next term, that is the third term, I'm adding last two. 
two. Addition of two and eight will give me ten. Look at it. Ten will now be the third term. To get the fourth term, I'm adding eight and ten. That will give me eighteen. This is how we now generate those terms. We added the last n terms. So what I'm expecting to have is a number 28 as I write more terms. So to get to the next term, I'm adding 10 and 18. That will give me answer of course 28. That means 28 is a case number because I happen to have the same number as a term in this sequence using this rule to generate the sequence. Let me take the last one. 197 is another case number. If that is the case, I can now form a sequence using the first three terms as the digits of that very number, 197. Look at it. So if I want to get the next term, what I'll simply do, I'll add the last three terms. So addition of 197, that gives answer 17. So to get the next term, you add also last three, 9, 7, and 17. That will give answer 33. To get the next term, you add the last three, that is 7, 17, and 33. That will give result 57. So if 197 is a case number, as you write more terms, what you now have, uh, you now have a term also exactly a cost 197. So let me just move. So next term will be 17 plus 33 plus 57. That will give result 107. If I now write the next, it will now be 33 plus 57 plus 107. That will give result 197. You can see I have 197 now as a term. So which means 197 is a case number. Let me just give you other examples of case numbers so that you can now practice. So other examples of case number 14 is a case number 19, 47, 75, 742 and many other numbers that are case numbers. You can try and see whether they are really case or not. So with this, I have come to the end of this very lesson. And we see more of this amazing things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.